Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English and this is Mukesh Soni. In this video, I'm going to have the discussion of the important questions from the model question paper 1, second PUC 2024, subject English. Duration for the examination will be 3 hours 15 minutes, maximum marks 80 and the number of questions will be on the question paper that is 30 questions will be on the question paper. So here, without much delay, let's begin the discussion of the model question paper 1, second PUC 2024 English. So before that, let's note some instructions, which are very important instructions. Uh, number one, um, prescribed limit. You need to answer the questions in the given limits, means to say in the given words only. And you need to mark the number of the, the, the questions in your answer script very properly. Don't do any mistake. Then the third one is here. When you are attempting the MCQ questions, that is multiple choice questions, you need to write the complete answer. Don't write simply option A. Along with the option A, what is the combined answer? You need to copy the same. Then there are three important questions where the answer should be in the particular sequence. Question number 25, that is a comprehension passage. 26, that is a pronouns. And 29, that is a note making, note taking. And these questions answers should be given in the proper sequence. So this is how these are the instructions. So let's begin it. The section A consists of questions, multiple choice questions. And each question has the weightage for one mark. And you have here 10 questions without any choice. So let's begin it. Question number one. Who is compared to a rich jewel in an Ethiopian ear? So what is the answer? Answer is here. Option B. Juliet. So this is how you have to write the full answer. Question number two. Though gambling is a dirty business, the king of Monaco resorts to it because, because option B, the king of Monaco rakes in the money. Then the metaphor bows and arrows signifies, what does it signifies? Option C, it signifies parents and children. Then where was the Naudanya farm started in? It was started in option B, the Dune Valley. Then question number five, you need to match the column A to B with reference to the play, A Sunny Morning. So who is Don Gonzal? Who is Don Laura? Who is Petra? So the answer is here. B. So let's try to connect it. Don Gonzalo is a is a gallant lover. Then Laura is a silver maiden. Petra is is referred as a mate. Then identify the sequence of events which made the honor of the garden lethargic in the story The Gardener. So what is the correct option? Is here option A. Improved. Uh, sorry, in income improved, theft stopped, honors lifestyle changed, and the old men arrived. So this is how you have to copy the full option from your question paper. Then the child's question number seven, the child's food is not yet aware it's a food and would like to be a butterfly or an apple. These lines convey the meaning of, what does it mean? What kind of meaning does it convey? And the answer is your option B, the unrestricted nature of a child's imagination. Then option, question number eight, who are exquisitely well-mannered people according to George Mikes in the, in the article, Japan and Brazil through a traveler's eye. So obviously well-mannered, we always talk about Japanese. So option C, is here Japanese. Then Marcus Ibb had had earlier been had earlier been. What's the option? Was he a school teacher, doctor, campaigner, bicycle repairer? Okay. Option A, he was a school teacher. Earlier he was a school teacher. Later he became a campaigner. Then Sheila Rani Chunkert, the district collect, uh, district collector, what did she promote? She promoted the empowerment of women. Option A, she promoted the empowerment of women. So this is how you have here 10 questions for 10 marks, MCQ questions each for one mark. So you have no choice. So be careful while answering. Give a lot of time, have a lot of patience. Think which is the most appropriate answer, right? Now we are moving to the section two of the, uh, we are moving to the next question number 11 here. Fill in the blanks by using the right form the verb given in the bracket. That is an active and passive voice. Active and passive voice. Uh, this was two marks here. Uh, I'm sorry, not active passive. Yeah, active passive voice. There was no suitable prison uh, prison in Monaco. 
there was only a small lock up where the people where the people keep temporarily so people is a uh, plural here so obviously helping work will be here were and with were we'll say here the past participle of keep uh, that is kept so were kept temporarily but it could not use so so the passive voice here it could not be used for a longer period of time so what's the answer is here were kept and could not be used so if you want you can write the you can copy the whole passage the whole answer and you can underline the answer that also that is also acceptable and you can also write like this also uh, in this manner as well now the question number 12 there's a linkers therefore but because so what is a uh, baswaya bedecked himself with gold diamonds and other precious stones blank his house looked dull and empty Tamana's books were not there. That is what the visitors told him. He started inviting scholars, poets, and musicians to the palace. So what's the answer? Baswaya bedecked himself with gold, diamond, and other precious stones. But his house looked dull and empty. Why? Because Tamana's books were not there. That is what the visitors told him. Therefore, he started inviting scholars, poets, and musicians to the palace. So this is how you need to you need to fix, you need to think for the appropriate linkers. That's for three marks. Linkers for three marks. Then, and active passive voice for two marks. Then you need to match the columns here. Uh, these are the five marks. Very interesting question and very expensive question. Five marks question. Sometimes... They might also ask you to match the author's name. So you need to remember the author's name also. Uh, you have 14, uh, 14 lessons here. You need to remember who has written which story, who is the writer of the water, Romeo, Juliet, water, etc. You need to remember each and every lesson's author's name. That also may appear. Match the author and the lesson. So here let's match leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. Where, where can we match here? Lips and bounds means to say very quickly. All and sundry, everyone. Monaco, toy kingdom. Japanese, Japanese are famous for mania of Boeing. Kanak Rajan, honor of Ram cycles. So how to do it? You need to do like this. Lips and bounds, very quickly. All and sundry, everyone. Monaco, toy kingdom. Japanese, many are boing. Kanak Rajan, honor of Ram cycle. So you need to arrange, you need to match the columns like this. Don't draw the lines 1 to 1 to D or C to. No, you won't get marks here. So that's for five marks. You're getting five out of five, right? Let's move to the question number. Uh, sorry, let's move to the next section. So that was section one. Now we are moving to the section two where you have to write the answers from the chapters from the lessons. So now here, here you need to opt your six questions. Out of eight questions, you need to opt your six questions. And out of six questions, minimum two questions you have to select from the poems, right? Don't select all the questions from the prose or from the play. Two questions you have to select from the poem. Otherwise, these uh, these two questions will not be checked or will not be awarded marks so here how many four marks six questions four marks totally 24 marks let's begin it question number 14 how does romeo glorify juliet's beauty in romeo and juliet in the lesson romeo and juliet so i have tried to give you a brief answer you can add your own answer also these answers are just a sample answer just try to understand it it just gives you a glimpse that how to write the answer romeo glorifies juliet's beauty mentioning that her beauty is so brilliant that it could inspire a torch to burn more brightly which means that even torchlight seems pale compared to juliet's beauty he tells us that her beauty is like twilight soft and radiant and shines just like a glittering jewel worn by a dark-skinned woman, an Ethiopian woman. Her beauty, according to Romeo, is priceless and too rich for use and very expensive for humans, which means that everybody cannot afford to have a beauty like Juliet, a white pigeon in the midst of a black 
crows can be admired easily easily so black crows here refers to all the other ladies and white pigeon here refers to juliet similarly juliet is more beautiful beautiful than all other all the other beautiful girls so in this manner romeo glorifies juliet's beauty in the lesson romeo and juliet question number 15 why does a prophet categorically state your children are not your children in the poem on children khalil gibran is a lebanese american writer poet and visual artist he's uh, he's best known for his great work the prophet this poem on children is a selection from the prophet which is a critic of the expectations of the parents about the children the prophet while preaching a woman who sought to know how much one must be possessive of one's children and the poet firmly makes a statement he says your children are not your children why according to him they are the wonderful creations of life parents are just the means children come through them though they are with their parents yet they do not belong to them they have their own thoughts and identities so the prophet asks parents to give the children just a love he stresses on the point that parents only house the bodies whereas the, whereas on the other hand the souls live in the house of tomorrow so parents should rather try to become like the children than molding them in this manner prophet says that the prophet says that children do not belong to their parents hence he says very aptly that your children are not your children question number 16 how does neruda describe the busy life of the individual as represented by the foot in the poem to the foot from its child in the poem to the foot from its child neruda the poet uses foot as a metaphor for life we find here we can see here different stages in life beginning with infancy or childhood maturity adulthood old age and finally death so these stages have been delineated uh, sorry have been delineated in the poem using foot these stages have these stages have been portrayed by using the metaphor foot the poem begins with the infant's foot and like all other children the infant's foot does not even know that it's only a foot it has a dream like imagination and and aspirations that's why it dreams of flying like a butterfly with absolute freedom and enjoy the pleasures of life which are expressed as a wish to become an apple however once the child's foot comes to face the external world it becomes aware that it's only a foot and cannot become a butterfly then it matures into an adult and from adulthood it grows old and finally it dies the poet describes how the child's foot which has soft petal like toes gets transformed into an adult foot which has toes which resemble eyeless reptiles and are covered with nails which are callosed and bear faint volcanoes of death finally having become an adult he slogs throughout life relentlessly working in fields markets mines ministries without respite and not enjoying the pleasure of life until it dies and is buried thus the the foot as a metaphor serves the poet to express his view of life though it's long answer just to give a summary you can uh, abridge your answer Question number seventeen: Heaven lies all over. How does the poet bring out this in the poem "Heaven"? If you are not here on earth, let me tell you: out of these six questions, your two questions should be from the poem. Don't forget, the poem "Heaven." If you are not here on earth, defines heaven in a different perspective: that it can be created on the earth with human effort by living in harmony with nature and with the social setup. so according to the poet's perspective poet's point of view there is no god there is no god since he has not been able to see any god or nor has anyone else 
so addressing heaven the poet says that it cannot be far away in the sky or elsewhere it has to be on the earth because there is no other suitable place for the god we human beings have to be gods and heavenly nymphs because there are no other gods or nymphs none has seen them none has has seen them nature is bountiful and generous towards men all the beautiful things on the earth the rushing roaring stream with its sparkling water the rolling surf at the edge of the waves the tender sunshine falling upon lush green gardens the gentle sun warming the earth the splendor of harvest and of moonlight all these make the earth a heaven nature's creations have such an eternal influence on the on the poet's mind the poet being more sensitive and observant than others imbibes and spills the song of a nectar pointing out the wonders of nature to everyone the poet rightly mentions here that only one who is soaked in this experience can create heaven on earth so by uttering his profound noble thoughts the poet creates heaven here on the earth itself question number 18 why did the prince of monaco keep changing his mind in dealing with the criminal in the story two deer this is from the story two deer written by count leo tolstoy who is a master of realistic fiction and widely considered as one of the world's greatest novelists this story is a parody of one of the modern systems of governance when the criminal was sentenced to death there was only one hitch in the matter there was only one obstacle they had neither a guillotine neither a, a guillotine nor an executioner the minister then sought the french government for assistance they said that they could they could arrange for the same with a cost of 16000 francs and they found the cost it's very expensive the council decided to write a letter to the king of italy italy though the cost quoted stood finally at 12000 francs still it was too much even the suggestion of asking one of the soldiers to execute the criminal did not yield the results so it was very difficult for them even the arrange to arrange an executioner so later finally it was decided to alter the death sentence to imprim- uh, to imprisonment for life so finally it was converted from death sentence to the impri- in, uh, sorry imprisonment in imprisonment for life okay the prince agreed to this he said okay we'll agree from death sentence to the imprisonment of life but exactly after a year when he looked over the account the king noticed that a new item of expenditure to for the keep of the criminal there was more expenditure to look after this criminal to feed him to give him food etc and it has come to more than 600 francs per year so they dismissed the guard so that the criminal might run away they thought okay let's remove the guard let him run away at least we can save 600 francs but this did not happen as he remained inside so when brought before this issue was brought before the prince to explain why he did not run away the prisoner said complained that they had spoiled his career his character by the sentence finally a council was called and it considered offering him a pension of 600 francs to get rid of him thus the matter was settled and hence the king of monaco kept changing his mind dealing with the criminal the reason is here only it was a matter of expenditure that's the reason that he was keep on changing and finally it also ended with another expenditure by giving him pension every year 600 francs that was more than in a, more than uh, to kill him or to put him to the sentence to death question number 19 from very difficult chapter write a short note on biodiversity intensive farming as referred to by vandana shiva vandana shiva learned about biodiversity in the himalayan forest and transferred those lessons learned to the protection of biodiversity on the farms she started saving seeds from from a farmer's fields and then then realized they needed a farm for demonstration and training so Vandana Shiva started Navdanya farm in 1994 in the Doon valley located in the lower elevations of the Himalayan region of Uttarakhand province 
she conserved and grew 630 varieties of rice 150 varieties of wheat and hundreds of other species biodiversity also helps to produce more food and nutrition per acre and reduce malnutrition and improves human health that's the answer question number 20 how did tamanna react to baswaya's encroachment encroachment of his land in the story the gardener when baswaya acquired 200 acres of tamanna's land forcibly then tamanna supporters told him about the possibilities to take back their land but tamanna was in search of a method that could annihilate baswaya Tamana started composing all his experiences in the form of ballads and singing them. Baswaya had no answer to this strategy. He also tried to sing, but he could not. He performed his agricultural task more diligently. He focused more on the agriculture. This too was no answer to Tamanna, and he could not defeat Tamanna. So Tamanna's reputation started spreading all around, everywhere. His song started making a mention of Baswaya's cruelty and his meanness. So he was expressing Baswaya's all tasks through his songs. Scholars of folklore were after him. Critics started analyzing and translating his songs and thus earned their share of fame. Baswaya helplessly watched all this and consumed by anger. He was very angry, but he was digesting this anger. And he encroached more and more into Tamana's land. Tamana did not notice any of these activities. Art became art became the raison d'etre of his life. He was felicitated as the best poet of his times. And this is how Tamana reacted to Baswaya's encroachment of his land. Question number 21. What are Borges' views on books? In the in the interview in the interview uh, I believe books will never disappear. Towards the end of the interview, Robert Elefano asked Borges' opinion on the comment that modern developments in communications will replace books with something more dynamic than reading. In reply, Borges asserts that books will never disappear and it is impossible to replace books. He justifies his opinions saying that book is the most astounding invention of men, whereas the telephone can be considered as an extension of a voice, the television and the microscope as the ext extension of a sight, and the sword and the plow as the extensions of an army, only the book is an extension of our imagination and memory, nothing can replace books. Books preserve the great memory of all centuries and the function is irreplaceable. Naturally, if books disappear, history would disappear. Men would also surely disappear. He says that books always retain something sacred, mortal and magical, which brings happiness. So I think in today's chart GPT, we would say we have to pray that books should be retained now the question number 22 roof was the most trusted campaigner of marcus ib justify this with reference to the uh, story or the article the water in the beginning of the story the the water we learn that marcus seeing is seeking re-election as a representative of miofia it was roof who had worked for his success in the previous election as a trusted whispering campaign manager of Marcus, Roof had been able to convince the people of Miofia that Marcus would work for the welfare of the people and they would get many amenities like running water and, and electricity. Then he had worked hard to get Marcus elected and had kindled the expectations of the people. But during the five years as people's representative, Marcus proved to everyone how joining politics can be lucrative. He had also given gifts to Roof to retain him as his election campaigner for the coming election also. However, Roof was clever enough to perceive a change in the mood of the people and warned 
Marcus about it. That's why in the whispering campaign, he goes alarmed. So I'm sorry. He goes armed with. He goes with money bags to persuade, to convince the voters, to lure the voters. Until the last, until the last day of the campaigning, Roof remains loyal and the most trusted of Marcus' whispering campaigner. Campaigners, but the visitors was the visitor from POP party cleverly lures Roof to promise his vote for Maduka, offering a huge sum of money. It is at this juncture we see a dent in his loyalty towards Marker, even though he knows that a half ballot paper is invalid as a president's mandate. As a person's mandate, he tears the vote in two and puts one half into each box. Thus resolving, thus resolving the moral dilemma in his mind. And this is how he's only confront, comforting, con comforting, sorry. This is how he's only comforting his conscience and he does not remain functionally loyal to Marcus. Question number 23, the last question for six marks, uh, for the four marks, sorry. Last questions. Cycling brings about changes beyond economic gains. How does P. Sina show this in the article where there's a wheel? Benefits of cycling. Cycling has been included as a part of literacy drive in Pudukottai. The district collector Shilalani Chunkat included mobility as a part of literacy. Over 1 lakhs of, of women from rural Pudukottai took to cycling. It gave the women it gave the women the self confidence it became the symbol for the freedom independence and mobility it reduced the dependence on men for the moment for example to sell their produce in the nearby villages they had to depend upon the male members of the family to go even to bus stop the cycling made them easy to collect water carting provisions and take the children either to school or to home etc Sometimes one see one person can see a woman doing more than one work at a time because they were carrying the produce, the child on the front bar, two or the three pots of water hung on the back of the cycle. So multitasking was going on due to the cycle. The cycling has many economic implications. It helped the women to sell their agricultural produce more by covering many villages in less time. So it enabled them to return to home to attend the house chores and to tend their children, look after the children and to send them to school. So they were able to look after the whole family. It also helped them to enjoy more leisure. So they used to get more time. In this way, the humble vehicle cycle has really made a revolution in the life of rural, rural women of Pudu Kottai. So these were the questions for uh, four marks where you need to attempt six questions, attempting two minimum questions from the poetry. Now you have here questions for another question for six marks. Here you have a choice. Two questions are given here and out of two questions, you need to attempt only one. So first choice you have here, question number 24. How did Donna Laura and Donna Gonzal, Don Gonzal spin? fictitious stories about themselves so which are the different stories they have weaved here from the play one act play a sunny morning so once don gonzal and don laura realize that they are the same old young lovers of maricela who are separated in life by fate they decide not to reveal their identity because they learn from each other in what high esteem they held each other before they depart they also came they also come to know that both of them had given up the other as lost forever while don laura tells herself that she had married someone else after waiting for him for one year don gonzal also tells himself that after fleeing from valencia then seville then madrid he had run off to Paris with a ballet dancer in about three months. So these two are very fictitious stories which they have weaved to not to reveal the identity. Therefore, they weave fictitious stories as to 
can as to conceal their identities completely and to make the other believe that he or she was dead later when they realize that they were they are alive they do not want to reveal their mutual images in the eyes of other therefore don gonzal tells himself that he will not reveal himself he is a because he is a grotesque he wishes that he wishes that, that he she had better recall the gallant horseman who passed daily who passed every day beneath her window tossing flowers similarly don laura tells herself that i am too sadly changed it is better he should remember me as the black eyed girl tossing flowers as he passed among the roses in the garden so these are the fictitious stories both of them they weaved not to re reveal the identity now you have one more option to this question so you can also opt this question if you don't know the previous one how does the poem water demonstrates the disparity and discrimination in our society illustrate in the poem water the speaker recalls many examples taken from the life of the dalits to bring out the disparity between the dalits and the upper caste people in their lifestyle the speaker mentions that water is a witness to the panchama's plight when he goes to the pond or tank to collect water since he does not have the right to draw a pot of water directly from a well he waits all day near the well until a shudra arrives there and fills his pot next the speaker mentions the humiliation of the wada girl when she receives water poured from a distance some water falls on her body and she feels she felt humiliated i'm sorry later the speaker portrays the righteous indignation shown by karma shown by karamachudu karamchudu suvarthama when she raised a vessel to ward off an attack by the kama youths against a dalit boy who asked them not to pollute the drinking water so these instances illustrate how the dalits were discriminated against using water from a public well the speaker recalls how people in the wada would thirst all day for a glass of water while the villagers had a lot of water to drink and bathe as and when they wanted on the other hand the people in the village enjoyed the bath twice a day because they had plenty of water and the dalits were made to forego water on the pretext of untouchability the narrator also narrates how in her childhood they walked miles and miles to collect water from the big canal and walked back carrying heavy pots of water on their heads with the veins in the neck straining and bursting finally the speaker recalls how several thatched huts in malapalli were reduced to ashes for want of a pot of water to douse the fire and water is the witness to this disparity and to this discrimination so these are the questions from the prose poetry and the one act play now we are moving towards the workbook now you have a passage here i am not going to read the passage you can pause the video and you can go through this passage so you read the passage and answer the questions there are 10 questions set on the passage and each for one mark and as per the instructions you need to answer those 10 questions in a particular sequence a to j in the same sequence please pause the video if you want to read the passage right you can also pause the video and you can read the passage and there are 10 questions are like this i'm not going to read the answers i'm not going to read the questions here i'll just give you a guidance here answer the questions very promptly don't copy the passages together don't copy the lines together for example when was bhavesh born that means to say it's asking for the date just say bhavesh was born on 29 december 1970 so answer the questions very promptly very appropriately and you can pause the video and you can answer 
those questions sometimes the last question may be about, about prefix suffix antonyms synonyms sometimes it could also be add a suitable title to the passage so here there's a question about the vocabulary add a prefix to word develop to form its antonyms obviously underdevelop so this uh, underdevelop you can find in the passage so this is how you need to read the passage and the passage has the weightage for 10 marks very very easy easily you can get 10 marks have patience read it coolly calmly right don't copy the lines just copy the exact answer now we are moving to the next question what do the underlined words in the following paragraph refers to refer to so you have here four words are underlined which are those four words they are pronouns they are pronouns so you need to connect those four words here so let's let's try to understand before we go for the answer bhavesh got a small piece of land from one of his friends so from one of his friends so his here refers to whom bhavesh simple he's equal to bhavesh built a small candle making center it has become a large industry so what has become large industry small candle making center so it here refers to candle making center it has become a large industry named sunrise candles which employs so which employs means to say which here refers to whom sunrise candles that's the name of the in industry which employs a team of 3470 visually impaired people so they here refers to whom they here refers to either employees or we can say visually impaired people so how to write the answer with reference to the your instructions you have to answer in a sequence just write his colon bhavesh it refers to candle making center which refers to sunrise candles they refer to impaired sorry you should write full visually impaired people or we can say the employees of sunrise candles so you'll be getting here four out of four if you write the answer in this manner next Question number 27. This question is from the topic language functions uh, from the last part of your grammar, your workbook. So here there are three blanks are here and you need to create the dialogue based on the instructions given in the bracket. So candidate asking permission to enter the chamber. So generally how to ask the permission? May I come in, sir? So what could be the answer? Answer you have here. Yes, come in and please be seated. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Officer inquiring about his qualification. Good morning. May I know about your qualification or what's your qualification? I have completed an MBA in marketing with two years of experience. Officer, you are appointed. Candidate showing the gratitude. Thank you so much. So how should we answer? Should we, uh, You can write the answer like this. Three questions, three marks, three blanks. Candidate, may I come in? Officer, good morning. What's your qualification? Candidate, thank you so much, sir. Or you can copy all the full dialogue and you can underline. Because though it's a technology I have highlighted in your examination, you should underline. Okay. So this is a language function, the dialogues for three marks. Question number 27. Now we are moving to the uh, quite difficult question, which many of many students, they feel that this is a very tough question. Report the following conversation. That means to say reported speech, direct and indirect speech. Now here, four uh, dialogues, four marks. So Don Gonzalo says, my cousin will never forget her. Laura says, how do you account for his conduct? Gonzalo says, my cousin died in the war, whispering her name. Laura says, it's an, it's an atrocious lie. So you have here two choices. Either you convert the complete conversation into the present tense then use only present tense or in the past tense so generally i prefer to say in the past tense because reported speech means to say we are reporting two persons discussions to the third person so generally we use we report in the past tense so i would say here don gonzalo told laura that his cousin would never will will become here will change into the would would never my cousin will change into the will change into the his cousin his cousin would never forget her now it's a question don laura questioned how you you will you changes to he how he 
दो यू आर राइटिंग द पास टेंस अकाउंट विल बिकम हि अकाउंटेड हाउ हि अकाउंटेड फॉर हिज कंडक्ट डोन गोन्जालो आंसर दैट हिज कजिन डाइट सी हि माई कजिन डाइट इट्स इन द पास टेंस इन द रिपोर्टेड स्पीच पास टेंस कन्वर्ट्स टू पास परफेक्ट हिज कजिन हैड डाइट इन द वॉर विस्परिंग हर नेम Laura commented that obviously it's a comment here or Laura commented that it was an atrocious life lie so verb will change present to past tense is will become here was so this is how line to line dialogue to dialogue if you do easily you will get 4 out of 4 just one thing keep in the mind either you change the complete in the past tense or completely in the present tense don't mix up next question number 29 note taking now this is a very interesting one um, so here a paragraph is given here the term resource is derived from french and it means tools natural resources are the raw materials and the sources of energy present on the earth they include the deposits of coal crude oil natural gas the basic needs of our existence such as air water and soil which gives us food and also belongs to resources that we may be able to exploit in future so you have to just pick up so the term resource is derived from is derived from derived from french you just write french here in this box so you either you can draw the box like this or you can write 1 2 3 4 5 and you can write the answer so i always say that better you draw it it looks so nice so beautiful so elegant and you can bring a wow factor here second is here means what is it means it means tools you just write tools here only one word sources of energy present in the earth's deposit so there are uh, three sources have been mentioned here they include the deposits of coal crude oil natural gas here you write coal you write here crude oil you write here natural gas basic needs of existence so the basic needs of our existence are air water soil air water and soil so your answer could be like this your answer could be like this you can write the answer in this manner or you can also write down uh, number 1 french number 2 two, tools number 3 coal but i think if you draw like this it really looks nice and you will get out of out so what is the weightage here four marks very nice you will be getting four out of four so i think uh, your english paper is very scoring you can easily get 99 marks out of 100 i don't know one mark may be deleted somewhere then last question of your question paper that's called letter of application or covering letter sometimes in higher education we call it as a cover letter but in the puc we call it as a letter of application write a letter of look at this question uh, your question has a lot of answer you try to gather the answer from the question itself that's a that's a very smart work you should do in the examination and this for five marks write a letter of application in response to the following advertisement which appeared in the newspaper the hindu dated 10th march 2024 for your name you write x x triple x for your address you write triple uh, three times y y so what's the, what's the job here computer operated qualification any qualification bcom bba bsc bca candidate should know kannada and english typing excel tally basics etc apply to the manager nidima finance private limited vishwa complex plot number 1176 bhavish nagar bangalore 520741 so i am trying to get here 50% information from the body of the letter i'll get here right so let's see how So, as per the instructions for the name X X X for the address Y Y Y, date one three March twenty twenty four, no comma, and the complete receiver's address I copied from the question paper. The manager, Nidima Finance, uh, Finance Private Limited, uh, Vishwa Complex, plot number so and so, right? Then salutation, dear sir, madam. Subject application for the post of computer operated. Reference your advertisement in the Hindu dated tenth March twenty twenty four. In response to advertisement mentioned above, I am applying for the post of computer operated uh, operator in your company. I am become graduate. That's your qualification. I am proficient in MS Office applications. That also means Excel and Tally. 
My typing speed is 150 words per minute. I am fluent in both English and Canada. I have six months work experience in this field as a part timer. I have enclosed my resume for further verification. I hope it will meet your requirement. Thank you. Yours faithfully. Signature and XX. You can see here. There's no comma here. It's a punctuation free. It's a left margin format. Now there's one thing which I have seen uh, according to the scheme of evaluation in the board examination where it is mentioned that there are no marks for the body of the letter. There are marks for the complete answer. There are marks for the complete answer. So if you write the complete qualification, everything about your PUC, your plus two, etc., then there's no need to add here resume. But I, I always suggest that you mention here resume. So as per your, your workbook format, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry as per your workbook format you can write the resume resume in this manner so please go through your, your workbook that's going to help you a lot i have borrowed your resumes format from your workbook so this is how you need to attempt your question for the letter writing and go through this format also go through your workbook format also the resumes format so friends, this is how I have tried to solve the model question paper of 2024 for the second PUC English. I have already solved the model question paper of 2023 and that model question papers link you can see in the description box. So um, I have just now started making videos on uh, for the second PUC students, though my channel has a lot of videos for the degree courses also. So when you join the degree course, you can find many videos on, on the BCom, BBA, BSc, and also the competitive examination. I have done a lot of videos on the pronunciation also. So I wish you good luck for the, your examination. Thank you so much once again. Dear friends, thank you so much for watching this video. You can reach me at mukeshenglish at the rate of gmail.com. Please do subscribe the channel, click on the like button for more videos on literature, workbook, pronunciation, grammar, communication skills, presentation skills, interview skills. Stay in tune with Mukesh English. Thank you once again.